As kids in the late 1950s and early 60s, holidays for us were often with another family, mum and dad's friends, Auntie Elma and Uncle Bert. They had two young girls around the same age as my sister and I, and a younger brother, who I remember as a rather snivelling, whiny kid who we just sort of put up with. But Uncle Bert and Auntie Elma were really good fun, and we would often set off on a day trip together to the beach. In the early days, we actually went by train, but uh, by the late 1950s, early 60s, most families had cars, so we drove and arranged to meet at the car park of our favourite beach. On this particular day, as we pulled up in the tea tree at the entrance to the beach, Uncle Bert was looking particularly chipper. Dad glanced at him, then noticed his brand new FJ Holden car. Crikey, new car, Bert. Yep, says Uncle Bert. Since young Mark here came along, we needed something bigger. Have a look, Jack. So with great pride, he pointed out the external cheeky two-tone paintwork, which the kid, we as the kids loved, the engine, which was boring to us, the spacious seats, the pocket for the maps, the roomy interior, and Dad made all the right noises admiringly while Auntie Olma stood aside looking very proud and Mum looked bored and ready for a cup of tea. Then came the piece de resistance, the huge boot. Look at this Jack, it's enormous. You can get all your stuff in, your beer, your picnic food, your fold-up chairs, your picnic table, and there's still room. Dad was a bit jaundiced at this stage, stealing a glance at our little blue Ford Prefect. But he was a good friend and a good man and genuinely pleased for Bert. I reckon you could just about fit in there yourself, Bert, he said. Easy, said Uncle Bert, and in he climbed. He was quite a tall man, but he had a point to prove, so he curled himself up into a ball and said triumphantly, See, I told you. Dad, being a bit of a smart ass, promptly closed the boot. We all had a bit of a relaxed laugh till Mark, the young brother, looking a bit worried, said, Can Daddy breathe in there? Sure, he's fine, says Dad, but probably time to let him out. He went to lift the door of the boot, but it was locked. Where are the keys, Elma? I don't have them, said Auntie Elma. They must be still in the car. No worries, says Dad, I'll just go and get them. So off Dad went to the front of the car, expecting the keys to be in the ignition. But they weren't. And they were not in the glove compartment, not on the driver's seat, not on the floor. Each stage of the search was punctuated by Dad yelling out, Are you all right in there, Bert? And the cheery response, Yeah, righto, Jack, I'm fine. Despite this reassurance, the jovial atmosphere somehow changed to something a little bit less jolly. Then suddenly a voice emerged from the boot. Jack, I've got the keys in my pocket. Whew, great relief all round. Uncle Bert could just pass the keys to us and Bob's your uncle. We can let him out. Except... The boot was locked and it was completely self-contained, not like modern hatchbacks where you can get to the interior of the car. So there was no way of actually getting those keys out of Bert's pocket and to my dad to secure Uncle Bert's freedom. Hmm. Mark was looking distinctly snivelly at this stage and Auntie Elma seemed frozen into a tight, strained smile. Or was it a grimace? Bert, when they sold you the car, did they say anything about another set of keys hidden anywhere in the car? No, Jack, can't say that they did. But there's a spare set at home. Home was a good two hours away. And the thought of leaving Uncle Bert in the boot, in the car park, in the tea tree, for four hours wasn't very appealing. 
Then Dad had a thought. Now you need to understand that in those days there was none of these nifty car locks that you just point um, like, like a remote control and there's annoying beeps and it's centrally locked. No, keys in those days were clunky, solid affairs. And believe it or not, they weren't actually individual or unique. So if you had a particular model of F.J. Holden, there was a chance that several others with that model also had the same keys. It seems unbelievable today, but it's true. So Dad sent us kids off on a mission, back out onto the main road to hail down any F.J. Holdens that happened to be driving by. Off we trailed with a great sense of self-importance and renewed optimism. Anne, Bert's oldest child, took the lead. I know my father's car better than you do, she said primly. There were a lot of F.J. Holdens around at that time. The first one we hailed down stopped straight away. What are you kids doing out on a main road by yourselves? Where are your parents? asked the driver. Anne bravely said, my dad's um, car's locked. Oh, lost his keys, has he? Well, not exactly. He has them, but they're in his pocket and he's locked in the boot. Right, said the driver, looking meaningfully at his wife, as if to say, poor kids having a dad with a skin full at this hour of the morning. So off we all trailed back to the car. If the driver of the FJ Holden was in any doubt of the truth of our story, he was convinced when he heard Dad's chant of, Is still all right in there, Bert? And a slightly weaker response, Yeah, OK, Jack. Uh, getting a bit stiff, though. The driver grinned at Dad, mercifully asked no more questions, and handed over his keys. But alas, they didn't fit the boot. Sorry, mate. Good luck, he said as he drove away. Off we trooped to the main road again, and the same scenario was repeated two or three times till we realised that our chances of getting a fit were pretty slim, and we gave up and went back to the car empty-handed. Things were starting to get a bit desperate. We kids could feel the tension in the air. While we were flagging down cars, Uncle Bert, by wriggling around in the boot, had made a discovery. The back of the tail light on the right-hand side was accessible to him in the boot. Dad and he worked out that if, he could, if Dad could break it safely from the inside, from his side, Bert could sort of twist around and pass the keys through. So with gritted teeth, Dad smashed the taillight of Uncle Bert's brand new car. And after a few grunts and groans and wriggles from within, the keys appeared through the hole where the taillight used to be. Dad opened the boot and we all cheered as Uncle Bert unfolded himself and got himself out. He stretched, looked at Dad and said, See, I told you it was a big boot. <laughs>